Hey what's up guys I'm Shekhar Singh and you're watching Satek and this is a video about the most common thing in the world of technology it's inside every piece of electronics that we use from smartphones to tablets from desktop to laptop it is a piece of hardware that we interact the most with while using our electronics or get in touch with you know get it because touch because we have touch screen phone anyway so the thing we touch or interact with to control our electronics is displays and this is what we are going to talking about in this video. Every display that we see today looks so similar to each other. All bright and shiny, slim, lightweight, having millions of colors. But when we take a look at the specs, everything is so different. Some are LEDs, some are LCDs, TFTs, IPS, OLEDs, AMOLEDs and even Super AMOLEDs. And that's what this get to know is all about. To get inside each and every kind of display and see where it is and how it works. This is get to know displays. first all electronic television made by Philo Taylor Farnsworth in the year 1928. Remember the big fat TVs that used to sit in our living rooms a few years ago? They used the same technology used by the first all electronic television made by Philo Taylor Farnsworth in the year 1928. And that technology is CRTs. CRT stands for cathode ray tube and those televisions are called the CRT televisions. But all the credit for inventing the CRT television cannot be given to Philo Taylor Farnsworth because the CRTs were not invented by him. CRTs were invented in 1897 by a man named Carl Ferdinand Braun. The basic principle on which CRTs work is that there is an electron gun at the cathode or the negative part of the tube which fires a beam of electron on a phosphor screen which lights up at the point where the electron struck. But along the way, there are many things that control the direction and the speed of electrons. After that, there's two pair of horizontal and vertical focusing and deflecting coils that decide the spot on which the electron should hit the phosphor screen. In the early days of television, it had no color. But in the late 1960s, colors was first introduced to a CRT display. The black and white TVs have one electron gun and a phosphor screen that turns white, gray or black when hit by an electron depending on the intensity of the electron beam. The color CRD TVs have three electron guns instead of one and a phosphor screen that has red, blue and green spots on it. CRT displays are great. They have wide viewing angles, low response time, can show true color, but there are some problems with it too. First, they are heavy and bulky and making a 55 inch CRT display would take so much space. And second, they can suffer image burning problem, which I will explain to you in a few seconds. And third, they use way too much power. Image burning happens when a single picture is shown on a CRT display for a long time. And you can see that picture even after the display is turned off. A blurred image of that picture stays there and you can see that image even after the display is turned off. TVs don't get this kind of issue because they don't display a single image for a long time. But CRT desktop monitors can easily become its victim. And to protect that, screensavers were developed that showed random images or animations to keep the monitor from displaying a single image. But even after that, CRTs were heavy and bulky and used way too much power. So there was a need of something slim and thin that uses relatively low power than the CRTs. And that's when the LCDs come in the picture. In 1964, George H. Helmier invented the world's first liquid crystal display. Liquid crystals were discovered by Frederick Reinzer in the year 1888. Liquid crystals is a state of matter that has properties of both solids and liquids. It can flow like a liquid but has molecular structure like a crystal. LCDs play a major role in our world. They are almost in every desktop, laptop or smartphone display we have. So let's see how LCDs work. LCDs consist of two polarizers right angled to each other. What polarizers do is that they let only one plane of light pass through them and because in an LCD polarizers are at a 90 degree angle, whatever light passes through the first polarizer cannot go through the second. And that's when liquid crystals come in play. Liquid crystals change the angle of polarized light and bend it to a 90 degrees so that it can pass through the second polarizer. When current passes through when current passes through LCDs, they untwist a certain degrees, depending on the voltage of the current, and that's how light is controlled in an LCD. LCDs do not produce light of their own, so they require a backlight. Backlights are placed at the bottom or sides of the display and several layers of different kinds of sheet spread it evenly on a screen. To add colors on the LCD, small layers of the three fundamental colors, 
red, blue and green are added. Those are called the subpixels and together they make one complete pixel. LCDs are slim, lightweight and do not require much space and uses way less power than the CRDs. But LCDs have their own limitations. They are expensive than CRDs and have narrow viewing angles. If you move out of the viewing angle, you can sometimes even see the negative of the image. And also, LCDs cannot show true blacks. Early LCDs use passive metric circuitry to conduct electricity. That uses a grid of conductive metal to activate each pixel. And those LCDs were not able to handle high frame rates. Anything above 8 frames per second would seem to blur. But all that was going to be removed. In the year 1974, the first active matrix LCD was demonstrated by Peter Bond, Fang Lau and their colleagues of Westinghouse. That demonstration made researchers and engineers to jump into the field of LCDs. And in the year 1988, Sharp Corporation made the first 40-inch TFT LCD screen that used active matrix circuitry. Let's see what active matrix and TFT means. Active matrix is a type of circuitry which allows faster frame rates and decreased response time. And TFT is a type of LCD display. TFT stands for thin film transistors and as it says in the name, TFT use thin transistors to control current in each pixel. So in a TFT display, number of transistors is equal to number of pixels. TFTs removed many cons of the previous passive matrix displays, like increasing the viewing angles, increasing the frame rates that it can handle, and decreasing the response time, making the displays more suitable for video games. In the late 1980s, TFTs were supplied to the PC industries, making the computers portable. And remember the portable Macintosh? It had a TFT LCD display. But still, the viewing angles of TFTs weren't as good as the CRTs. And the TFT displays were still not able to draw deep blacks. To fulfill these needs, IPS displays were developed by Hitachi in the year 1996. IPS displays also fall in the category of LCDs because it also uses liquid crystals but in a different way than TFTs and other passive matrix LCDs. Let's see how IPS displays work. Structure of IPS displays is similar to that of TFTs because it also uses an active matrix circuitry and it uses polarizers and liquid crystals between the glass and backlights. But there is a difference in polarizers. The polarizers in IPS display are not right angled at each other but are in the same plane. So when there is no current in the liquid crystals, light will pass through the first polarizer, get twisted by the liquid crystals and blocked by the second polarizer. But after passing the current in the liquid crystals, they untwist and let the light pass through them without twisting in the same plane as the polarizers. Unlike other LCD displays, IPS displays have both the electrodes on the same side of the screen. And because of that, light coming from back of the screen gets blocked. So more bright backlight is placed behind the screen. It's pretty easy to get confused in the working of IPS and TFT displays. The simplest I can put them is like this. TFTs or passive matrix LCDs work on the principle of letting the light pass through and blocking some of it when needed. And IPS displays work on the principle of blocking the light and letting some of it pass through when needed. Let's see how IPS improved the world of displays. IPS displays improve the color quality and the viewing angles of the screen. So you can no longer see the negative of the image. And also decreasing the response time. But with all that goodness, there has to be some bad to balance the scale. Since IPS displays use brighter backlight than the TFTs, it uses more power almost 50% more than the TFT displays. And the retina display that Apple uses in iPhones and iPads is just an IPS display with the number of pixels so high the human eye cannot see an individual pixel. Oh and the LED TVs, the most popular line of TVs, is not so different from the LCDs. It uses the exact same technology as the LCDs, the liquid crystals, the polarizers and everything else except the backlighting. LCDs used CCFLs as backlighting. CCFL stands for cold cathode fluorescent lamps and LEDs use white LED backlighting. But that little detail created a huge difference. LEDs as we know require a very little amount of power. So LEDs decrease the power consumption and LEDs are more durable than the CCFLs, making the TV last longer than the LCDs. It's time to talk about the latest kind of displays, the OLEDs. Organic light emitting diode. At CES 2012, LG launched the world's first OLED TV. It had a 55-inch screen and was only 4mm thick weighing 3.5 kilograms. Let's get inside the TV and see how OLEDs work. OLEDs work on the same principle as the LEDs and just like the LEDs, they can produce their own light. Except there is one difference, OLEDs use organic materials to make a diode. 
LEDs have two layers of organic material between the cathode and anode. One is the emissive layer and other is the conductive layer. Emissive layer contains electrons from cathode and the conductive layer contains holes from anode. When the current is applied, cathode supplies electrons to the emissive layer and at the boundary of emissive and conductive layers where the electrons and holes are very close, electrons fill the holes and release energy in the form of light. Color of light depends on the emissive layer. Manufacturers use several types of organic films on the same LED to make color displays. And the intensity of light depends directly on the intensity of current. OLEDs just like the LCDs have two different types of circuitry, passive and active. Passive matrix OLEDs have strips of cathode, organic layer and strips of anode. Anode are perpendicular to the cathode and where they intersect makes a pixel. Passive matrix OLEDs are easy to make but are more suited for the smaller displays of like 2 to 3 inches. Active matrix OLEDs or AMOLEDs have full layers of cathode, anode and organic molecules. Then just like the TFT LCDs, they also use thin film transistors to determine which pixel gets turned on. AMOLEDs require even less power than the passive matrix OLEDs and even better frame rates. And since OLED displays do not require backlight, they can show true blacks by turning off the pixel where the black color is required. There are many kinds of OLED displays, flexible, top emitting, transparent and white OLEDs. And each one has their own advantages and potential to be used in different kinds of devices. OLEDs have way more advantages than any other kind of display. OLEDs have even better viewing angles than the IPS displays. They are brighter than the LCDs and are more flexible. How flexible? That flexible. It can help in creating more flexible devices like the LG G Flex. They use way less power than any other kind of display making them even more efficient for battery powered devices. But since they are organic, they can easily be damaged by water. But that's not a problem because we have already seen many waterproof and water resistant devices like the Xperia Z2, Xperia Z, Samsung Galaxy S5, the Moto G and many more. OLEDs removed almost every corner of previous displays. By being slim and thin, really lightweight, high frame rates, low response time and because it does not require backlight, it can show true blacks. Let's see how OLEDs can be used in the future. Remember the see-through phone that Tony Stark uses in Iron Man 2? Can be made by using a transparent OLED display. Maybe 5-10 to 10 years from now, Google Glass will use transparent OLED display that will make it look more like regular glasses. All I'm saying that OLEDs have a lot of potential and can be used in a lot of different ways. And this is it, end of the get to know. Do hit like if you actually learned something from this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, just click on the subscribe button and I will see you in the next video.